Hey everybody, it's Altony, and today I'm sharing how I made a get well card using Lawn Fawn's Treat Yourself and Baked with Love stamp set. I'm starting out with a piece of Bristol Smooth paper, and I cut that out using the largest of the stitched rectangle dies by Lawn Fawn. And here I am going over all of it with some Tattered Rose Distress ink. I did notice when I was doing this that I kept leaving fingerprints and the paper felt a little tacky as I was going around it with my ink. So I did kind of have to work to buff that out a little bit. Here I'm going in with some sponge sugar Distress ink and I'm going around the edges and blending a little bit more into the middle to kind of help give a little bit more definition to my card. Still noticing that it's kind of wet that I'm kind of having to buff out some fingerprints as I go, um, but not as bad as with my first layer. I, I kind of noticed it less the more I went, but I was still buffing out fingerprints. Here I'm going with some warm lipstick, to, and I'm just going around the edges of my card with that, um, just to kind of make the edges a little darker and to create a lighter center to give more of a focal part point for my finished piece. So I'm just going around the edges. I'm kind of blending it in a little bit towards the center, helping again to kind of cover some of those fingerprints I was cropping up with. Um, but I do love the way that this paper works with Distress inks and it blends so beautifully. I then just went over it with my Ranger heat tool just to kind of make sure everything was dry and set before I moved on to the next step. Once I dried it, I had no problems. Here I'm taking the next largest size of the large stick stitched rectangle frames and I'm just using some painters tape to cut that out of my piece. This will give me a frame for the shaker card that I am going to be creating. I'm making sure everything lines up. I took the Baked with Love stamp set and the Treat Yourself stamp set and I'm using um, Victorian Velvet Distress Ink marker for my cupcake liners, sponge sugar for part of the cupcakes and then I go in with some worn lipstick to kind of give some dimension to my cupcakes. I started out by just blending it out with the sponge sugar marker and it kind of left a funky texture on the paper um, that I wasn't totally crazy about so in just a little bit I'll go back over it with my water brush marker that I have there so that I can kind of smooth it over. I'm using Vintage Photo to make some chocolate ice cream, and I don't have the Hickory Smoke marker, so I just took an acrylic block and my ink pad of Hickory Smoke, dabbed it on there, used my water brush to kind of blend it out. And then I'm using Cracked Pistachio and Seedless Preserves for my ice cream container. I just kind of put it on there and then blended it out with the water brush just to create some highlighting. And I did make a little bit of a mess, but cleaned right up with water. And then took my heat tool to make sure everything was completely dry and I cut those out using the matching die set. I wound up not using the second cupcake. I guess I didn't line it up properly when I put it on there so kind of came out a little wonky. Decided not to use it. Um, I love that Lawn Fawn has all the matching die sets. I do love to fussy cut but I'm glad that I don't have to do it for all of these little images. I then took my frame and my background and I just kind of lined it up on the back and wanted to see how everything was going to work. Uh, I mostly wanted to see if I was going to need a second cupcake, but the just the one was actually going to work just perfect. So I set off those off to the side and then I took a piece of heat resistant acetate and I cut that out using the largest, again, of the stitched rectangle frames. This way it would line up perfectly with the frame that I had created earlier. So I took my frame and then I just took some of my ATG uh, tape and I ran it around the edges. I wound up going a little too close to the edges so I just folded that tape back in so that it would, wouldn't be a problem and wouldn't show up on the front of the card. Then I just took the acetate and I lined it up perfectly, smoothed it down, made sure everything was all lined up and good to go. I 
So then I took my scrap piece of the Bristol Smooth paper that I had stamped the images on and I took the Feel Better sentiment from the stamp set, Treat Yourself, and I just used some black archival ink to stamp it onto the scrap piece. I love to use every little piece of paper that I can. Um, I'm a big coupon shopper and I save where I can, so I save even the tiniest bits of scraps for every little thing. I also took the solid heart from the same stamp set and stamped it on the end. I just thought it made it really cute. I then took the smallest of the sentiment banners from Lawn Fawn and just line it up and I used some more painters tape to kind of just stick it on there so it wouldn't move around when I ran it through my Sizzix. I did notice that I didn't get it quite even so I pulled up my tape, I repositioned it, stuck it back through, no problems. I was really happy with the way it turned out. I like to take the Michaels um, card bases to use for my cards. And I'm always losing my bone folder, so uh, you'll be seeing me there taking a, an acrylic block just to kind of flatten the ends a little bit more. Um, going back with that inner piece of the frame in my ATG gun, and I'm just sticking that to the front of the card. I decided I wanted to do a shaker card. Um, this is my first, so I was pretty pleased with it. I had a lot of fun making it, too. So I just made sure everything was going to line up right. And this being my first, I didn't think about the fact that I probably should have put the foam tape on the frame itself and not around the edges of the base. Uh, I did have some issues with some of the tape actually sticking out further than the frame when I was done. So lesson learned, put it on the frame next time, won't have any issues. I also wound up cutting my foam pieces a little too short in spots, so I went back and I kind of cut and re-layered just so I wouldn't have any holes. You don't want to have any holes when you're making a shaker card or you will definitely find yourself covered in glitter and beads and whatever else you decide to put in that card. Lesson learned from a test that I made earlier. <laughs> I decided to go with two layers of foam versus three. I didn't want too huge of a profile uh, on this card, so I just peeled up my tape and I wound up putting a second layer of tape right on top. And I found that that gave me plenty of dimension for what I wanted to do. So I took my anti-static foam bag and I ran it over my base and then I ran it around the edges of the foam tape just to make sure there wasn't any sticky was going to be left on the inside that any of the glitter or sequins or beads might stick to. I then filled it up using some iridescent glitter stars and some rose gold uh, glitter stars from that I got from Michaels. I also added in some pink glass seed beads that I got from Joann's. And then I added some more pink large sequins to give a little bit of contrast to it. Kind of mixed it up before I decided to peel off my tape. Um, I did run my anti-static bag over my acetate to help keep the glitter from sticking to the acetate. Now after I peeled up my tape, I didn't feel like there was enough shine or contrast. Hard to believe with all that glitter, right? So after I got it peeled up, I did go back and pour in some silver glitter that I got from Michaels. This is also chunky. And poured that in, stirred it up, then added my frame on top. Didn't quite get it lined up the first time, so I very carefully peeled it back up off of the foam tape and then laid it back down. This is when I realized that I should have put the foam on the back of the frame versus the card as I saw the foam pieces sticking out. So I just took my X-Acto knife and very carefully just cut those extra pieces off. Then I took some of my leftover foam from making the height of the shaker card and I just stuck those to the back of my cut images. So I wanted to pop them up from the acetate and kind of give them a little bit more depth to them and some more dimension. I'm all about dimensional cards and I love putting as much depth on there that I can. 
this is one of the reasons I did not want to do three layers of foam versus the two that I chose to do because I was afraid I would give it too much height if I was going to do three layers of foam for the shaker and then another layer of foam for my embellishments. So I took those pieces of foam like I said and then I also took some small 3D foam squares. I love these little tiny foam squares. They fit so great on so many small objects and you don't have to cut them down. Um, I also like that they're black because sometimes they can be a little bit harder to see because of shadows. So I have a ton of these. I use them all the time. They are a staple in my collection. So then I just popped on my banner after I added all my embellishments and I was done. Um, I really love this card. I think it's a really cheerful get well card and I love the fact that it's a shaker. I really hope it can brighten up somebody's day. Thank you so much for watching and if you enjoyed my video, please subscribe and please visit my blog. All of my links are below.